This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's time to talk tech, get geeky. It is the Awesome Cast episode 311. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. Video producer by day, podcaster by night. Actually, it's all all the time, anytime, all the time. Uh, but with me, first of all, coming from Stark Tower Studio C, it is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. If you're on the video, excuse his stretchiness because uh, Google Hangouts... Um, changed something tonight and it doesn't it's not it's there's a problem <laughs> but you're here go, go, with us go, google did you dirty it uh, google did me dirty and show with, with, title is is <laughs> is acquired um yeah and, and, go, go ahead no change log no warning no 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 Just, using a newsletter you know you know maybe the fact that i don't pay for anything you know you know somebody actually <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw on the Slack, but there was like a service that does like everything that Google Hangouts does, and and oh, like CNN uses it and stuff. And I was like, ah, like, I'm good with Google, right? It'll be fine. And then this happens, and it's like ah, maybe I should consider something else. Uh, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see as we go uh, if we have any more issues like this. Chilla, he is the gadget guru down at Big Bank Big Bank International Incorporated Enterprises, and thank you for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. And also with us on the couch, she is a social media guru and zombie wrangler and zombie um, uh, fisher out of the river this past week on the regatta uh, with the Scarehouse, the Scarehouse podcast, and of course, Sidekick Media Services. Katie Dudas, at Katie Dudders on the Twitter. Hello. I think I got all your things in your resume in. I think that's good. Good enough. I'm trying to make sure <laughs> we have a very complete introduction for everybody uh, <laughs> lately. Like That's my, my latest goal. So how you doing? Good. I like cats. <laughs> oh, you've watched the latest Saw Tooth Lily. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Uh, but this is the Awesome Cast. Like I said, you can check us out at awesomecast.net. Uh, check out all the geekery we got going on there. And I'm hoping to, I'm hoping we can unveil some things um, in the near future. Um, I'm working on some cool interviews and stuff. And we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get those back here. Uh, maybe by the end of the month or at least in September. Uh, but in the meantime, you can check out that. Uh, subscribe to this. Check out our past catalog of interviews. It was real great. Actually, we talked with uh, Nick from uh, X Pogo, who did an event last month. And they were also down there doing uh, free shows at the Regatta. And I got to speak with him on Sunday. Uh, and we talked to him a while ago um, on the awesome chat way back in June. So check out that and all kinds of fun stuff that we've uh, talked uh, All kinds of fun people that we've talked to uh, over the uh, first year or so of that uh, production. So, and also big thanks to our friends on Patreon, patreon.com slash awesome cast. If you got something out, if you're getting like uh, some information out of this, if you're being entertained by what we're uh, talking about on this show, uh, please, I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash awesome cast. We have a couple people given five bucks. You do not have to give $5 necessarily. Give us a whatever, thousand. whatever you can, um, <laughs> just, you know, whatever it's just any donation thing. And we're not doing advertisers except for sites on Broadway to provide pizza for us. Of course, and we're not pursuing pursuing a lot of big advertisers at the moment. Uh, so I want to see if we can support this fully uh, with with fan funding, uh, and we really appreciate those that are doing that right now. This will see business development up in uh, Cranberry, PA, as well as at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Mike Fedor, thank you, and both of them uh, represented on the show in the past uh, as part of this, and they get all kinds of goodies for being the executive producers at the five dollar level, and you can. Too. Uh, and if not that, uh, if you don't want to be our boss like these are, like these people are, uh, just share the show. Uh, share the show on Twitter, on Facebook. We're on all that stuff. Just look for at Awesome Cast, all the places, and uh, and 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 share it with your friends and share it for other and, geeky people. And please, please too remember it that at the twelve thousand dollar Patreon level, <laughs> you not only get us um, the the Microsoft. Oh, uh, what's their what's their Oh, the, Holo the, uh, the HoloLens. Not only do you get us HoloLenses, but we'll get you one, too. There you go. And we'll all play together. That's the Chilla promise. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I should put that as a level and just see what happens. Uh, but, you, you know, know. 
you know, yeah. Uh, but anyways, let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla, I am so jealous because I actually got to talk to the, one of the guys behind this thing, but you actually got your hands on something really cool this week. Yes, so I got, and where is it? And I got to tell you, um, they definitely pulled out all the stops on the packaging. Mm-hmm. Um, they they have a very nice box. Um, I got the Mevo, oh. um, which is a small uh, video recording device. Uh, it's actually, a lot of it's powered in, by your, your iPhone, um, but I'm going to hold the device up to the camera. Um, I was amazed... I thought it was honestly going to be a lot bigger. Teeny. I thought it was going to be just shy of like a, 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 a small can of Coke mm-hmm. um, or, or like a pop can. I mean, this thing is tiny. Um, it does have a micro SD card slot. Um, it does come with 16 gig gig micro SD card. Um, it does have a uh, micro SD uh, port or micro USB port for recharging. Um, and the, the whole top of the device is a big giant power button, um, which is pretty nice. Um, it will, and the one thing that I was pretty impressed with, and I haven't gotten to play fully with it yet, um, but the one thing I was impressed with was we knew you were going to be able to record locally. Um, we knew you were going to be able to, to, to pump out some streaming services, but they added uh, Facebook Live to their list of, of streamable services. Um, the app's easy to use, iPhone and iPad only at this point in time. It does not run on Android. I'm guessing the reason for that is is because it's taken 4K video and it's pumping it down into 1080p on the fly, which allows you to kind of go from a wide angle to very zoomed in pieces. It does facial recognition, um, so you can kind of tap on different faces in different sections of the screen. It'll auto transition into that. Um, then it'll record it down to the SD card, live stream it, and um, then you can take it to your de- to your device as well as potentially edit in, in your your video editor of choice. Um, but but overall, I mean, it's it's a it's an extremely nice device. They do sell some extra add-ons. Um, they have their own tripod. They have an additional device that this will sit into. Um, that's an extra battery pack. Um, I've heard over a half an hour of battery life. I haven't gotten to fully test it myself, um, but all in all, it's it's a solid product. Nice, nice boxing. Um, the apps easy to use. Obviously, they're paying attention to the population because they've already come out with an app update. Um, the device, I think, retails, and I'm going to get this wrong, probably uh, three um, three ninety nine. Three ninety nine on 399. the site. There was so a three ninety nine. I did. If you got it early, if you right. pre-ordered, you got it at the two ninety nine level. Um, but right now it's three ninety nine, and I'm not sure what the delivery time is. Primarily because I know um, they're they're shipping all the pre-orders right now. I don't know anyone who who just ordered it. What they're what that order looks like for them. Mm-hmm. And we talked with uh, Max Hoat, one of the co-founders of Livestream a while ago. I, actually, at the time, it seemed to be uh, it seemed to be actually named the movie. They had, so there was, actually was like a branding name change since this thing came out. Uh, so uh, that, that's been kind of interesting. Uh, but no, it's definitely something that, that seems interesting, like kind of an all-in-one. Again, this, this, this $400 level has been really interesting lately, uh, especially between this and the Ricoh Theta, of course, we've been playing with, uh, the Samsung Gear 360 that, that you've been playing with, uh, uh, Chilla, and of course, that's kind of like the GoPro level. Uh, to be kind of having the studio in the box at that level is, is, is pretty impressive. So what so you talked about a little bit how it's it's kind of taking that 4k taking bits of it compressing it down uh, in, in different ways H- have you done enough testing to really get a, a a feed on on how you like the visual quality of this thing i i am i haven't done enough with that and i did notice some stutter um and actually that's the one update they recently did to the app was to fix some transition stutter and and motion and facial detection feature. Um, keeping in mind that when it does stream out, it only streams out at 720. Uh, it does do up to 30 frames per second. It will do a check on your bandwidth, which I thought was pretty cool. Nice. Um, so it'll it'll actually try to try to scale down or scale up. Um, so I thought that was a pretty neat feature. They do recommend a five megabit per second connection. Um, it does handle. Um, 
it, had, it does handle stereo uh, audio. Um, and I, I did read something about it. You can also add external audio input via iOS. So I have to play around with some of that too. Nice, nice. And there's a lot of like, you, yeah, you can connect in with some higher end uh, live stream stuff. We actually have a friend uh, with Cut and Run uh, Productions up here in Beachview that he actually operates a lot with live stream. So I'd be interested to see if he's been looking at this as an option as well for his stuff. Kind of like what we do uh, with work hard when we're doing the, the, the live stream, but we're using YouTube and using black Mar- magic hardware and everything. Uh, but uh, it's interesting to see uh, what they're, what they're doing with it. So how do you feel? Do you feel like it's kind of a nice um, middle of the road, uh, high consumer kind of product at this point? I do feel like it's a, it's, it's a, I, I feel like they've they've taken some of these extra extra steps to try to push it a little bit above that that baseline. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd put it uh, put it above average consumer, and and the main reason why is when you look at their accessories. Um, one of the things that they have is is the the Mevo Boost, which is an extended battery pack, um, but it also has an Ethernet and USB jack on it. Um, And one of the things that that USB jack can be used for is to plug in a Verizon um, MiFi device. So then you can kind of take your own uh, stream on the road. And obviously uh, Verizon's making sure that that you have the bandwidth to push this kind of video. But but when you hear about these people, you know, trying to hook up a satellite or do something in in kind of a remote location – and they're not going to be able to run hard wires. They've actually taken that into account. And one of the, right now they're only supporting the Verizon UML 295. Um, but they are working to support additional devices. Mm-hmm. Um, and this will allow you to, to pretty much stream anywhere where you can get a decent LTE connection. Um, when you think about that five megabit per second, um, that's not to me a real strong LTE connection when I can get, Sometimes in a really good location, I can get twenty to to thirty meg down, mm-hmm. no problem. So I'm showing consistently. I'm showing a little footage here uh, from from uh, Mevo's um, um, YouTube page, and, and they claim it's the first footage released, and then they're switching. It. And there's even like they're they're not they're even having some problems, kind of miss switching things, and they move the camera a little bit. Uh, but it is interesting. So so remember when you're looking at this here, this is one camera. All these shots are one camera. Right. And you're basically zooming in on parts of it and somebody's on a phone clicking on on the different shots and the face and, and stuff like that. But I, it is interesting that it's a little close because it is a cooking show. So it's close to the table and everything. And when you go on the wide shot, you do notice there's that little bit of a wide angle uh, kind of view to it. Like I, I'm noticing in a lot of the shots, actually, a little bit of that, 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 that odd thing, you know, which is fine. But, you know, a lot of GoPros are the same way, too. Uh, but so so that's that's definitely something I would keep in mind. If I was trying to film with this thing, uh, so uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of curious uh, to see that. And again, just kind of figuring out where where would you use this, right? Uh, is this something that I replace like half the stuff I do with just this to produce something? I mean, this is something where you're like, oh, you're on a budget, you can only you know afford X, then we'll use this thing, get the thing done, boom, boom, boom. Hey, it's not going to be the highest end quality, but it might be enough for whatever that it thing is that you're doing, right? Especially when you look at some of the some of the stuff people are doing with, you know, recording Minecraft and Twitch and things like that, I, I could definitely see this being, if you're in a band and you want to kind of do do some live recording, I think it's one of those things. Much like anything, I don't think you can take it out of the box, throw it on a tripod, and and be up and running in seconds. No, no. Um, because of because of the switching capabilities in it, I do think it takes some practice. But I could see a lot of if you have a small, one of the things I'm thinking about using it for is is um, recording uh, four person panels. Mm-hmm. So you have four people at a table, and you're kind of doing a, a panel discussion or a oh, round geez. table. Yes, I could I could see this being kind of the perfect thing for that. It, one of the things that you talk about it's it's one camera that can handle multiple angles to zoom out. Um, that's where I'm kind of looking at it from. Um, I'd also like to, to see if I can, I know a couple small bands, um, bring it out and, and, and kind of play with it for that. Um, we have an event, I think coming up towards the end of September, I was thinking about bringing it along and, and just kind of giving it a whirl. Um, I'm going to be going on vacation. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit there. 
I can't think of a lot of uses for it on vacation, but you, but no. you never know. It, it's based more, on the size, I mean, it to me, I mean, it, it fits in your hand, like just to to try to equate how big it is. I mean, make a fist around it, and it's pretty well hidden. I feel um, like this. So is, I was I was amazed at the size. This is the thing that you like capture the kids, uh, uh, you know play or something right mm-hmm. if you really want to get the thing is like when you're live switching you have to pay attention like it's not just sitting back with a camera and, and you capture it like you're really kind of you're producing a, a, a you're producing at that point right so you're producing on the fly it's not like you're taking three camera three camera angles that you have recorded on three different cameras mm-hmm. and then stitching it together in post and, it's, and it's even, all live even to the point where we've actually made a decision lately just partially because of uh, quality concerns that we've had as we've been upgrading things um we've actually moved away from live switching for our pro wrestling events because we find that we have a better again, it's something that moves really fast, so it's 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 just tough. If you miss something, you miss something, you know. So it's like, well, let's just go capture it. We can put it together in post, and I can roll back and eh, let's let's move into that move a little bit earlier, right? But then we have like conferences and startup weekends where it's just people talking. It's, per, it's a person talking. Slide easy, right? And that's where mm-hmm. I could see something like this being okay, like panel discussions. You don't have to be right on when that start, that person starts talking, right? Like you have, uh, you like have a, more you leeway. Pod camp. I think pod camp's a good, good u- utilization for this. Any kind of conference oh, yeah. would be a good utilization for this. That'd be tremendous. I would only be concerned with audio because I don't think I would want to take audio just from that thing, right? Like you yes. kind of, you kind of want another audio source, but then that kind of kills the, I want to do everything for the app thing. But again, those are the kinds of concerns. Uh, for instance, we, where we, we were talking the other day about, uh, I was doing some of the 360 video at, you know, the gathering of juggalos and these concerts and the bass was just destroying the audio on this little thing or at the wrestling shows. And I was like, well, at least at the wrestling shows, I have another source of audio. We can lay over that uh, and fix it up. Right. Um, thankfully that wasn't uh, too big of a problem. So, so again, it, it's kind of like you got to piece out a lot of that. So. Well, the, the interesting thing is with its ability to use the internal or the, the mic input or audio input on the iPhone, mm-hmm. you could throw a, a lightning based microphone up there. You could run kind of something into the iPhone and then, and then, cause it's, it's streaming, compiling on the phone and then pushing out. So you could could potentially use some additional you could actually grab the the audio off of a mixing board Certainly. um pump it pump it into your iphone and then bring this in for all the video so uh, there's some ability there that's where i want to play with it how well i know it works with the the eighth inch audio input um i don't know how it works with some lightning devices um so that's some, yeah. some of the stuff yeah. i want to play around with well, we'll see we'll see i think it's a really really cool option Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? We're living in the future, yet the past. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the future, future past. So the new Nintendo NES, the classic edition, that wonderful thing that's coming out with, I think, 30 games on it, including Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, Metroid, uh, Kirby's Adventure, will give us the option for save points. So we will not have to sit there all day to beat our games. We can come back to them later. Nice. So it's similar to like the Super Nintendo whenever they so have the same So we points. can't, we don't have to just leave it on all the time. Yes. Who was, where was, somebody was talking about, it was somebody we were talking about with or something that, that, that they were uh, playing a game on PlayStation mm-hmm. and they left the PlayStation on with that disc spinning for like an entire weekend. Um, I, I oh, I think it was somebody. It was somebody I ran into at Replay FX, and yeah. So, so you know, it's not just the electronics are on. Like there is a spinning mechanism on for three days straight while he's waiting to beat that game. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty cool. Uh, but no, yeah, I mean, because you look at those. Some of these games were long. Oh yeah, like I, I remember leaving the Nintendo on pause for you know, oh, I have to go to school <laughs> or I have to go to bed mm-hmm. and overnight because you just, you took a while and even things that you thought were quick just took a while to be. And I, especially I'm looking at like Zelda and things. That would be wonderful to be able to go back and play Legend of Zelda and yeah. have save points because there were so many things to do within that game that right. you couldn't even explore because you're like, oh, I got to beat this before X, Y, or Z. Oh, it's so great. I, I, I know I could just build a Raspberry Pi and basically do the same thing. But just having that little thing that, that kind of does it all built in, it just mm-hmm. feels like it's the right thing to do, you know. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm also I'm reading I was reading this article and it's going to offer pixel perfect display mode that shows each pixel from the original as a solid colored square instead of fuzzing things up via anti uh, aliasing aliasing thank you I couldn't see upscaling it will also offer the option to play a classic 4.3 in the simulation feature the mimics playing on a classic bubble fronted CRT TV <laughs> With the so lines no and everything, flat screen. <laughs> With the lines <laughs> and everything, man. Yeah, I remember like uh, like upgrading to a twenty five inch TV. I'm like Mario's so huge on this thing. Like I can't even imagine on like the the forty inch that 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 I have now. You know, uh, but uh, that that's awesome. Uh, I, I think it's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be worthwhile. I think just just to have that HD output that that treats the game right and mm-hmm. makes it look right on the display. Um, cause you can completely, um, you know, you can completely just hook up an old one or one of these other systems and, and it's like, yeah, that's great. But again, everything's fuzzy. So that's awesome. It's gonna be amazing. Yes, November. Yes. We wait till November. We can make it that long. That's okay. We got Ghostbusters third or I'm sorry, Transformers 30th edition, uh, in September to tide us over. Ooh. Yeah. Found out that was coming out, uh, digital and, and Blu-ray. I'm like, okay, that just, there's no question at that point. Right. Mm-mm. All right. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, most things virtual reality, and uh, this guy had something uh, uh, fun. This man is cycling around the UK in virtual reality using Google Street View and a Gear VR. Uh, so he actually set this up, and you see it boot up in the video as, like, is, is using Unity uh, for one thing. Uh, you know, of course, it's on a Samsung device and everything. And he's he's basically he has it set up so he can, again, you know, drive the length of the UK. It's pulling in all these Street View images and everything. Uh, they, they were saying that, that, you know, there's some goofy things. A lot of buildings work out. I mean, you can actually see some of them getting a little weird there. But some of the images have these weird floaty spots and everything. Uh, but it generally gives you that feeling of driving along in you know mostly in london and sometimes there's a you'll get an image in front of you that has a giant bug splattered on it on the camera uh (laughs) weird weird like kind of like like black holes and potholes throughout some some images that don't stitch together but even just look in that video there like that is that looks pretty good the weird squares kind of over top of you are kind of odd but i think that's kind of a that's that's a street view function or something it's like it's like playing pac-man yeah it is a little bit like playing pac-man <laughs> as you're as you're going there uh so he, he basically just started coming up with this because he's like i was really bored using my stationary bicycle and and he he developed this so i'm hoping this is something that like gets kind of a little more uh that he releases so maybe we can snag it or or somebody else will maybe you know uh put it on the you know oculus store or something uh to to play with but uh i i think that's really really cool uh a, a nice use of uh of uh vr there so um and, and, and you, yeah go ahead you see this used like i think there i've seen some commercials for um treadmills and and bikes and whatnot the cyclists uh where where they have like kind of a big tv on on top of the unit Mm -hmm. and there's like a trainer in the corner and then they they do use google street view right um to kind of let you run run places that you're never probably ever going to get to run um so i definitely think this is kind of the next foray into into that um i'll be interested with Google being so on board with the VR technologies, are they going to take Street View to the next level? And, and to your point, as you're as you're watching some of this video, things kind of stretch as you pass them, and then there's kind of like you can see where the image ended and the next one begins. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they'll take more of a three dimensional approach. Well, they already are and, to a point. And I think you see that in in this setup here, and, and there 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 is a lot of. There is a lot of wraparound. There is a lot of the topography that they're applying here. Uh, mm-hmm. So they are, they're doing more than just running around with a camera and taking pictures. Because you see a wraparound. And it's even you see this more so if you pull up, you know, Google Maps in... in Because, uh, I mean, I think it's a combination of the maps and the Earth data has kind of, kind of melded together. And um, and I think he's using a little bit of everything there, uh, but yeah, it, and it's actual it's th- it is three D data from Street View that you're you're viewing there um, that that he's able to to, to download. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's imperfect, but you know they are capturing the entire world's roadways 
more or less. You know, <laughs> it's going to be imperfection because they're doing it on this mass scale. And obviously, like this has improved greatly over the last uh, uh, several years here. So, but no, that's pretty cool. He's even got a display. I just noticed this on, on the one shot. He's got a little bit of a display of of uh, um, uh, kilometers per hour. Uh, uh, looks like looks like the length that he's gone. Wow, this one's getting real weird. Like the road like jutted up in the middle of the scene. Um, so sorry for you guys on audio, but it, it basically just looks like you know you've lined pictures along uh, the side of you. And, and if there's a building, it looks like there's a building there. And if there's a field, it looks like it, it's outstretches as a field. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool. Um, some of these uh, trees along the side of the road look like just like um, green walls a little bit, but uh, you know, but still, I think it's a really really cool effect to mostly you know be there. And then you have a little bit of this to play with. I, there's a Street View apps on cardboard, and I think on the Gear VR as well, right? So so this is this is I mean this is something that they are making something, but of course he's combining it with the with the bike, so. Go check that out. There's an article over on The Verge, um, and you can check out more information about it on his blog, Cycle VR, which is at cyclevr.wordpress.com to follow the project. I, I recommend that. All right. Uh, big shout out, and we'll get into some more, I think a little bit more VR. I, I, I have a, just the, I, I watched the quick video on this next one. Uh, but in the meantime, shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, uh, fueling up the show, uh, stopping by there earlier today, our, 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 our Beachview friends. Uh, check them up on the uh, Broadway Avenue here in Beachview, right along the tracks. Uh, they're getting close to finishing. Only another like month of this, guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe a month and a half. But um, and then we'll have our Beachview back. And, of course, down in Carnegie, PA on Main Street, or over on at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Katie, weren't you over there for that the other day? At the regatta was that was that you? Where, where, where oh, was no, that was somebody else. Where was that? I don't know. Somebody tweeted about somebody tweeted us about about they were down there at uh, Saison Bravo. Yeah, I Pittsburgh. was. That's right. That I took you. my zombies after um, kayaking. <laughs> we had the giant pieces of pizza. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you can check it out all. Rico over. asked if they're still taking care of us over there, and I had to tell him uh, sometimes. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was. Very, I said no. They're very much taking care of us still over here. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, they're awesome. They're awesome over here. Uh, check them out. Sliceonbroadway dot com or pgh underscore underscore slice on the pit on the Twitter. And I believe they're going to be. I know that the city paper is best of Pittsburgh uh, is upcoming with nominations and everything. Uh, we talked. We mentioned our friends. Uh, uh, d- does this hold up? Um, uh, you know, being uh, up trying to get in on nominations. So hey, if you want to nominate Awesome Cast as well, that'd be really appreciated. <laughs> Uh, so uh, please go check that out, sliceonbroadway.com. All right. I got another VR story. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have much about this, except I just love this. I raced a real tricycle through a virtual world, and I didn't even die. This is over on The Verge's Cir- Circuit Breaker uh, gadget blog. And, uh, I, again, I, I didn't get into like the technical side of this, but the guy's wearing an Oculus headset, and he is definitely on a tricycle uh, riding around a room with a VR helmet. Um, and they get a little bit into uh, this, uh, the setup with this. Um, and there he goes. How do you, I, I, I'm kind of curious if this kind of, you know, did they set up more sensors with this or something to kind of uh, uh, keep him on the right track? He's corded. He's riding a tricycle and he's corded to a computer. <laughs> So oh, and that was going to be my question. Do they, do they do they dangle the the cord from like the ceiling to make sure he doesn't get it nope, tangled up in the it wheels? It looks like or? it's across the room. <laughs> uh, but uh, that was another one over on the verge. I thought was kind of fun. So uh, really cool to see what people are doing with VR and apparently uh, bicycles these days. So um, wanted to throw up a tip. Um, did did um, geez, Chrome had a huge update, didn't they? Like I was noticing like a little. Little like 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 UI changes, like this morning when I got up, like they're they're doing that, and then they're gonna. I, I hear they're gonna drop um, or force the browser to go HTML5 uh, and drop Flash support by end of year. Oh wow! So it, yeah, it's the only thing that still I did. Has. I did notice I the UI changes over the. I, I think they actually hit a major rev number. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so, I checked so, yeah, it's like I've at been, the fifty-two. 
it's up to 52 now. Uh, but definitely not this one that's on my poor Windows XP machine that I'm, I'm viewing a lot of these things on. Um, but but with that, and I don't know if this came with that update or this is something that, that's happened over the last. I know they just celebrated like maybe a three year anniversary for Chromecast. And uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger of a picture. Uh, you can check it out in the middle of, of, of the screen. But if you're using Chromecast, I noticed they, they have a lot more controls. It's, it's a better interface now if you have the plugin on your Chrome browser um, and you're watching something. Now, here I was watching Cord Killers earlier, and this is the drop down I took a screen cap of. And you actually have the controls right here. No more of that um, hoping your YouTube window doesn't go out of sync with the Chromecast. Uh, to be able to actually control the thing. Uh, so I thought that was a nice update for them. Uh, then I noticed you got cast stop. Uh, you even have volume uh, controls and, and, and pause and play. Uh, so so it's not like, okay, I got to make sure I leave this tab over here. I got to make sure nothing happens to this tab. And even it worked out really well because I uh, got the new... Hold on, where's it at? I got the new, uh, I, I new Scooby-Doo movie in today. <laughs> with the wwe and I was, I was watching that on flixer because i don't have a blu-ray player and i'm just just doing the digital uh but even that like i got the closed uh, flixer and just use this to to control it um from then on uh so yeah no i, I thought it was it was a pretty cool update and also uh, i i consider this kind of the app of the week um hey dash siri.io i heard of a couple of these on, on other podcasts throughout the last week but i don't think it was the same one uh, but but i think this is really important because I, I i'm not realizing how much uh my phone can do on siri um to the point where there's some things on here about um you know you know hey <laughs> enable wi-fi and things like that disable wi-fi um i remember trying those like a while ago and they weren't things that my phone would do right um, you can increase brightness, minimum brightness, uh, 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 turn on Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, airplane plane mode. Like it seems like a thing that made sense a while ago, but it's completely something you can do now. Um, the data calculation, maths, maths is that right? Conversion stuff that I use Google for, to be quite honest. You know, stuff in the App Store. Um, you know, so if you're kind of like, because it's not, it's hard to like. Even Siri only gives you so many things that you can do with it. Um, so I think it's nice to have a little bit of, you know, something that, to say, oh, I haven't used this. Like here, uh, give me a map of Florida is one of them they give here. And, and I think they actually change in like some of the things you can ask for um, in the context. Show me the nearest restaurant on a map. Show me traffic. Uh, show me show me the traffic in New York. I was, I'm actually kind of curious about this now. Um, show me traffic in Pittsburgh. We'll try this. I don't know. I was trying to get to take a picture. And it opens up maps and shows you the traffic on the, on there. So, um, again, I think it's because you do kind of need to learn these things. You got to train yourself to use these things. Like, I know anytime I'm like, oh, that's a thing I want to do tomorrow. And I, I say, you know, remind me, remind me to do this. Remind me to send uh, that person that email. Um, uh, things like that. I'm trying to use it as that extension of my brain. Uh, Chilla, I know you extend this out. You you have podcast lights that turn on and off with it, so I know you're exploring this a bit more. Um, is that something? I mean, have you really had to poke at? I didn't really have to poke at it with that because they do give you some examples when you set up HomeKit. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I like a lot are the like call back my last missed call. Um, read my last text message, call so-and-so, and you can actually, you can, you can say, call so-and-so's cell phone on speakerphone. Mm. So like if you have a contact that has multiple phone numbers and then, I mean, you have homework, cell phone, whatever, you could say call whoever's cell phone on speakerphone and it'll actually then call and put it on speakerphone so compounding some of those commands i really like as well as um some of the features of of the like redial redial the last number um call back my last call uh, some of those features I, I use it a lot for the contacts and calling i use a lot of the dictation pieces um carla actually heavily 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 uses um the dictation pieces to the point where she actually dictates out with punctuation. Wow. Um, so you can say, I can't believe that happened exclamation point. Yeah, I'll be there in 10 minutes 
will you be there question mark like you can act, actually add in i think it'll do certain emojis um so <laughs> wink, so it's it's, winky it's face. pretty impressive mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Will you be there, winky face? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, 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 you know, people are saying, you know, it feels like it's a little bit behind. I do open up Google, the Google search, if I want information, if I want the the math conversions. But it, but they do have Wolfram Alpha, of course, as a part of it. Uh, so I mean, or you know, but Google is kind of the place that I've been trained broadly to go. And even though I do always have this thing on me, it's like I. I know I can ask that of Google anywhere I'm at, right? Like maybe I don't have the phone in hand or in my pocket or something, and I'm in, in front of a laptop. This is interesting. I didn't know it could do it could do math math like what is six minutes and forty seven seconds minus two minutes and thirty nine seconds. So if you're trying to clip in video mm-hmm. and you want certain video segments, it'll actually calculate and it'll convert minutes to seconds. Could have used that. And seconds to minutes. That's great. That's great. Katie, how are you with Siri these days? Do you have a good relationship with her? Um, Slash him? Well, I I primarily use it for note taking, like when I'm driving and I think of something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't want to forget this. So I have a bazillion notes. It never works for me in the shower. Oh, no, I never got that door. It never works in the shower. And that's the thing where you come up with all the good ideas. Mm -hmm. And and there's just me in the shower yelling at my phone across the room. And it just doesn't work. But um, but yeah, so mostly note taking for you. Yeah, nothing else crazy exciting because I used to have it on all the time. But then um, I would watch something like before I went to bed, I would watch something and somebody would say something in a show and it would trigger Siri and it would scare the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. So I stopped doing that. <laughs> so I, I, I feel like I don't use it as much since I have to actually I have to physically hold the button down <laughs> as opposed to just yelling at her. I am actually I don't know if it's working less because I have it in a case like this. Like, it feels like it's not picking up on a lot of stuff. Also, how many times people say they can't hear me on phone calls. Uh, so I, I, I try not to unless I have headphones available. Uh, but still, if I'm, like, jogging, or not jogging, yeah, me, jogging. Uh, if I'm walking or something and have the headphones in, it's, like, super easy to to, to use a Siri. And it, it works about every time. So, um, but, yeah, just a little bit to uh, kind of, if you haven't uh, uh, stretched out what you're doing with that thing. So well, yeah. I'm excited when this, I'm excited for this to come to the Mac personally that, yeah. that's where i'm thinking this is gonna really really help me out is just when i'm working on something to be able to to be there hey so-and-so or um dictation thing it, it'll dictate now i don't think it's as accurate as, as the, the iphone is so i'm interested in seeing where where they take it from a mac perspective it'll be curious because i know even sitting here after we upgraded some of these computers to windows 10 like the hmm, cortana would activate mm-hmm. a lot of things while we're doing recording, you know, and that's like, eh, no, no. Uh, so I, I think that's, that's interesting. I'm surprised it's never popped up on this computer that we record on that we're inputting all the good audio into. And we'll say, Hey, Cortana. And it doesn't activate. So I don't know. Well, you have to, you have to turn that on. You do. And, and, it's, yeah. not, and it's not a computer. It's a desktop. So it doesn't immediately have a live microphone. So maybe that's, okay. that's off by default. When it detects, well, no, but even even I had to on the sur- the two Surfy I have, I had to turn Cortana <laughs> <Surfy>. on manually. <laughs> <laughs> Surfy in the future, Surf- in the surfaces. future, in the future, we all have the tablets, all the tabli. Um, I, I'm interested to see how they. And I haven't tried this downstairs yet. I'll have to try. Um, hey, Cortana. Apple's putting something in, and I have seen it work in beta, where somehow the devices know which one picked up, and the other two shut off. Ooh. So if you have your iPad, iPhone, and and Mac sitting there, and you say, "Hey, Shlomo," um, it's only going to answer on one device. I haven't tried that downstairs in the living room with it because now the Xbox has Cortana. She she's inside the Xbox now, so I, I don't know what'll happen on the on the the Surface and the the Xbox if they'll both pick up or if if you just get one. I just have this vision of you just sitting on the floor in your living room <laughs> and just like surrounding yourself with Microsoft devices, and then the Xbox <laughs> in front of you on the TV, and you're just like looking around like like hey Shlomo. Hey, 
which one are you picking up? Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 where my head's going with that one. So all right. Uh uh hey, you know, Pokemon Go still mm-hmm. making the news. Um, the weekly update, the um, all important update of what uh, Niantic has taken away or give, giveth backeth uh, this week. Of course, the battery saving feature last week. Um, a lot of people were angry uh, because they took away tracking, completely turned it off. Uh, they took away the battery saving feature, which, by the way, was was glitching on me. Yeah. So that I you know, please turn it off and fix it. Uh, what did it? What did it actually do? With the battery saving, it's essentially when you turn it on. If you have your phone and you're hunting for Pokemon, if you turn it upside down on its head and put it in your pocket or just kind of set it upside down, um, you'll still be able to. It'll vibrate when Pokemon are in the area, but it just doesn't. Your screen will go off. Yep, it just kind of. Uh, it's still doing all the other things. It just mm-hmm. kind of turns off the screen to to save some stuff. Um, this week's update uh, 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 brought a little bit. There's some balancing issues as well, like easy little you know Pokemon's, uh, like the worms and stuff that were low. We're still taking, uh, uh, you know, we're still breaking out of balls and running away more often than they usually do, which is a waste because sometimes you pay money for those things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this week they brought back the battery saving feature. Um, new Pokemon tracking mode is on its way. Uh, right now, I, I think most of us are seeing where there's like a little bit of grass behind the Pokemon. Apparently, mm-hmm. some people they are they are rolling out to a small subset of users that that will actually display the picture of the nearest Pokestop that that Pokemon is near. Uh, so oh. I kind of like that. Say, hey, go over by that church over there. There's probably a Pokemon. Uh, so there you go. Also, there is a no driving mode. You have to confirm that you are the passenger before you can continue. I noticed that when I was driving home from work today. Because you were Pokemoning while you were driving? <laughs> eh, sometimes I poke and drive. <laughs> it depends um, on how many stoplights are between me and me and my destination. Right. And how many Poke stops are also at stoplights. Right, right. Or can I take that gym before this red light uh, turns? By the pool. That doesn't work. No, no, no it usually that doesn't, doesn't work because I've tried that on the T. Yeah, There's, no, you, you have to get off the train. Yeah, you got to get off the train. <laughs> then you got to pay transfer. You know, I mean, just it just gets ugly. Um, but anyways, and aside from that, and actually, I was we just had stuff on because it's Olympic season, and I love that I can just turn on the TV and watch random freaking sport in HD. You know, I and, and on my on my over the air. Um, so the news was on. And they had a story. Apparently, uh, Allegheny uh, Hospital Network here in town has banned Pokemon Go. No. They have contacted Niantic and had them remove all gyms and Pokestops from their locations. You're that big enough of a, of a company, group, whatever, you can do that, right? Um, and uh, and they've, they've encouraged people to stop playing in the area i don't know if like if i'm walking down the hallway they'll stop me but um but uh, i'd imagine it's also a problem for employees as well (laughs) so you know especially like you're in a place that's as cavernous as a hospital you could really work up your uh your uh pokemon eggs with that so i am really tired i'm sorry go ahead i'll say every update i have to enter my password in again for my gmail and I cannot stinking remember my password I, for my Gmail, and I refuse to change it just for Pokemon Go. I don't. I have never had that. Again. Neither have I. Wow. Uh, it, now it went in and had me um, re, you know, reallow permissions, mm-hmm. but I didn't have to do a password. Nope. This is the second time in. Do you what, have a week? Do you have like? Are you tapping your screen when you when you launch Mm-mm. too quickly? Because I did notice that if you tap that loading, tap that loading screen, there's there's a sign out button on there. Yeah. And I've accidentally I've accidentally hit that, and then there's no at least in the last version there was no. Are you sure you want to sign out? And it'll just yeah, it just signs you out real Booting quick. Out. And I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, use that last pass. I know. It takes care of it for you. Do it's you want a- my password? Yes. Can I be you? you can log in as, you can log in as me. Hey, look. I, no, it's it making me verify my permissions again. I told you you could do that earlier. Stop being a jerk. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's still pretty widely. Um, I, I saw a lot of people around the regatta, of course, um, using it. So um, I, it's still it's still pretty and definitely still around Mount Lebanon. 
little less than before. They're not mm-hmm. like all over the coffee shop, but still, it's um, it's still it's still fairly substantial. I, I think it's going to come in waves as like new features roll out. Mm-hmm. You know, like like wait until like we we start having like one on one battles or trading or something. I think you'll see a flux again. And so. that, well, you have to figure in a couple weeks everybody will be back in school. So it's just going to go. Boom. Man, the pro. Well, that gives the rest of us a chance mm-hmm. to take all those gyms during the day, and uh, and um. I can't imagine the problems they're going to have with Pokemon playing in schools. Like they already have enough problem with cell phone stuff. Was well, it with the school? Is there enough open space and is there actually any gyms or anything near schools? I could see at the college level, but near middle school and high school, I mean, most, most schools have, have the devices banned anyway. Is, is it really going to be? Uh, probably as much as anything else uh cell phone i don't know i i, I don't know yeah. what the take is on, on that I, I imagine most of those things are mostly banned uh throughout throughout the day uh but you know how kids are you know yeah get their they'll get their snappers yeah those are whipper snappers i don't know i don't know but you don't know that big fight that happened sunday night downtown they might have started with pokemon you don't know you don't know <laughs> I just I just learned about it by the way. I didn't even know it happened. So, so apparently there was a huge. <laughs> we we were almost walking through it. Oh jeez. <laughs> um, well, uh, it was, uh, let's go along the video games thing thing again. First of all, archive.org. If you don't know, there's a great batch of uh, emulator games posted on there. They actually have in browser emulators, uh, so you can play a lot of these things. Where I think we were talking about a little bit last week. Um, um, so a, a yay and nay on this. Uh, first of all, Nintendo Powers. Like I think they said the first 100 issues of Nintendo Power were added onto it uh, and had been for a little bit. But Nintendo has asked them to stop because uh, they were concerned about their copyrights. That sucks. Um, but So I won't be uh, selling off my Nintendo Power collection anytime soon. Uh, but now they've, asked, they've added Amiga. I don't know anybody that's owned an Amiga that I know of. Uh, but they've added uh, more than 2,000 Amiga games in your browser. You can play for free on the Internet Archive. They have the Bat- Michael Keaton Batman 1, uh, Lemmings 2, Double Dragon, some pretty decent stuff here. And again, Secret... Uh, but they, they are missing stuff like uh, Secret of Monkey Island, which are, are available on other platforms. Um, but, uh, but don't, I, I, you know, you, you never know why, why they can or can't get these, uh, you know, rights to these things or get them collected, but, um, that's pretty cool. So, uh, internet archive, it's the library of Congress. The library of Congress is collecting video games. Okay. Like wrap your head around that, you know, and, and making them playable for you for free. So that's really, really cool. Uh, so go check that out. Also, hey, shout out to the Replay FX guys um, that were responding to us on Twitter. Um, I didn't know that they had like a repository of games, and I could have gone another Turbo Graphics 16 game. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how I missed that. I was just kind of wandering, and I, dude, I was I, I was not seeking anything in particular. I was really just wandering the day playing video games, so it's no big deal. Uh, but anyways, uh, but I just want to give a shout out for them. It was really cool that we got a little bit of feedback about that um, as well last week. So, um, Dutters. Hello. I'm Dutters. What? <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> Facebook and head blocking. <laughs> so, um, apparently, Facebook has, it's within their coding, their HTML now, uh, that those, your ad blocking software will not be able to stop Facebook ads. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you thought you could do it, you cannot. So, um, but they are going to give you the option to visit the ad preference settings so you can block certain types of ads from certain businesses. But, um, yeah, you still, they can, you can't stop them at this point. It, it looks like organic content. It looks like just basic content. Right. Instead right. of an ad. They're just kind of serving it in a different way that, that they don't pick up on, right? Mm-hmm. And importantly, Facebook refused to pay the ransom most ad blocking software companies are willing to accept to whitelist certain sites and keep showing their ads. This is an underground thing. The whitelist? Whitelist. So so the way it's been explained, mm-hmm. and I think it was Adblock Plus that that they were explaining this about, and this is something I've heard from some of the security shows have, have brought this up. Or or, or no, actually it's probably this week in, in, in uh, Google now that I think about it. But they would actually um, again this kind of ransom thing, they would take the top like five percent, ten percent of websites. So based on like, okay, the uh, uh, I don't know, CNN.com gets X amount of traffic. 
Therefore, we're going to charge them X so they can get their ads through our users. It was it's getting really sketchy. <laughs> I mean, it kind of was the beginning one to say, hey, I'm going to block ads. But I mean, the problem in the long run is a lot of people, uh, you know, either just do it because it's annoying or they do it because they don't want malware to come through, which is an issue. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not so worried about Facebook. Like Facebook seems to do an OK job with ads. Mm -hmm. So I'm not concerned with that. And I have not. Chilla, I don't know if you have. But I have not delved into the ad blockers on the phones that were allowed. So I, I, I ran them for a moment in time, mm -hmm. and it's not something I left on because then I started uh, – when those when those first came out, especially for iOS, and they were built in, so they are built as an extension, that one guy felt so bad about uh, the building his – he gave everyone a refund and, and stopped it. And then I, I, I heard a lot of companies – like iMore and Mobile Nations, which I do visit iMore, Windows Central, um, Android Central, et cetera. They've actually spun up. A, they've had a wearables site. They they have a VR site. Um, so uh, they were actually urging their readers not to use those because that's one of the only ways they make money. Um, so I looked at it as something I should probably not be using. Right. It, did it make a difference? Yeah, page load times did go up. Um, but I feel like a lot of people are becoming more aware of formatting for mobile. Um, not that they're necessarily going to get around the ad blockers, but they're doing whatever they can to, to give better load times. Google obviously moves you in search results based on how well, well formatted your site is. Um, and then they're doing some additional stuff. So, so I, I, I did play around with them. They did work. Um, they were reliable, but then I just started to feel bad for most of the sites that I visit <laughs> and don't and don't kick back anything too. Well, you know, and and I've seen that, and and just to clarify, uh, Marco Arment was the was the fellow that did the, the and he's he's done uh, a couple apps that have kind of made him uh, pretty popular and and doing very very well for himself, uh, which I think was including a podcast listener. I think was his main one. Yes, that was his first one. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's been an interesting debate there. Uh, I think mobile ads are the most annoying when you go to a bad website and it does a, a screen takeover and bounces you down after you started reading the thing um, or asks you your, lo your location every time that you go to their website, cbspittsburgh.com, um, <clears throat> and, uh, you, know, you know, things like that. You know, they, they just annoy the crap out of you. And mostly, like, stuff I click through from Facebook. Um, and, and, and I've seen that wired. A lot of these other ones will say, Hey, please don't do this. This is kind of how we pay for things. Or, or I think wired is one of these that says, Hey, don't like ads, pay us like a buck a month or something like that. And we'll take off all the ads and, and give you a, a, a thing, which I think is novel. You know, if you like the content, but you mm -hmm. don't, or I'll just turn off the, I'll just turn it off because I know something like wired who does, I mean, wired in the verd verge, just do amazing formatting on their feature stories. I don't want anything to ruin that anyways. And I know they're not going to let advertising ruin that. Right. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. I'll support that. And, and we're cool, you know, but I'm going to leave it on for everything else. Like the dinky, especially the wrestling websites are horrendous, uh, absolutely horrendous. And I'll just end up on them just because that's the nature of what people are sharing on the groups that we frequent. Right. Um, and then you realize, oh, this site isn't anything. I'm going back, right? Um, but it, it the is cool thing is you can kind of load the, you can load those extensions on the fly, at least on iOS. So you can kind of go down oh, to yeah. the oh, yeah. action sheet and swipe over and turn it on or off on the fly. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I don't know. Let us know. Add Awesome Cast on the Twitter if you guys are in the chat room. How are you using ad blockers? Um, why are you using ad blockers? And uh, and do you feel bad? for for the people that you're checking out there um so i mean it is a business in trouble i mean newspapers aren't now aren't although newspapers are the worst offenders you know, mm -hmm. you know? yeah i'd love to support you post gazette with your ads but they are horrible so you know what what are you gonna do you know uh so i don't know. I just want to get to your content man <laughs> um but anyways and i do, i also love the ones where it's like oh you've reached your five views of the new york times and, and it's just articles i just happen across right and then other places will just copy and paste the article into their news site it's, yep 
Well, it's it's interesting. Speaking about that, um, we have there's a couple. Uh, I think there's various ones, but like Lawrence County and Newcastle have breaking news sites on Facebook, and the Newcastle News has essentially told them they are not allowed to post articles on those breaking news sites from the Newcastle News because it breaks the terms of service hmm. on their website as far as like the online content goes. <laughs> so you could essentially link to it, but if you put the story where the people can't go back to the paper. Mm-hmm. 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 Take a look at that. Makes sense. Yeah, it's just interesting how it's like, boop. Yeah, yeah. well, there was, there was anything in Europe or something, they were trying to make Google pay to link to stories. Yeah. It was like, hey, wait, 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 wait. We're helping you. <laughs> you know, um, but there's just this giant j- disconnect that seems to happen out there. Uh, Chilla, do you have a story? Hmm? Which one? Like, do you have a story to tell us about the regatta? I do have a story to tell about the regatta. So, interestingly enough, we were at the regatta. We had walked from down down at the point up to the Clemente Bridge to have some food. Um, one thing led to another. My my mother left her bag on the top of the bridge and sat down to, to feed Christopher and someone walked by and took her bag. Um, in her bag was a thankfully small amount of money, um, uh, some cards and her phone more than anything. Um, fortunately enough, I quickly handed her my phone. I signed out of find my iPhone and had her log in. Um, it quickly, the, the iPhone appeared down on the river walk at PNC Park and continued to move mm-hmm. away from us down towards, if you're familiar with that area, the Tilt, Kilt, Bettis, Grills, TJE, that type of area. Um, I ran quick enough to, and, and while I was running, I was trying to activate all of the lost features on the device because she doesn't keep a passcode on her device. Um, and if you've ever been, have you ever been through the lost phone feature? No. And, uh, not completely, so, no. So, so one of the interesting things is, so, so typically my experience with Find My iPhone is, hey, did I leave it somewhere or let me ping it and make an audible alert so I can figure out where it is in the room. Yeah. Um, when you tap the lost mode button, it walks you through a number of prompts. Um, it asks you, do you want to, do you want to put a new passcode on the device? So I said, yes. And then it lets you remotely set the passcode. Um, you can't unlock the device without that passcode. Um, you have, it then asks you, um, do you want to display a message on the phone so you can actually have it display text? Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to display text because I figured it was stolen. I didn't want them to know that I knew that they had walked away with the phone. Um, You can allow it to have a button on the lock screen that allows it to call one phone number and you can program that Mm -hmm. remotely. Um, Also didn't want to use that feature, but it is there. Um, and then you can start audible alerts. So I opted out of all of those additional features primarily because I didn't want the person alerted to the fact that I was trying to find them. <laughs> um, so after, after about a half mile of jogging and catching up to the person, um, now I'm in a mass of people because it's the regatta. I'm in a mass of people and I have no clue where amongst the crowd the phone could be. Um, So I got to the point where I was kind of, uh, this dot was here and and my dot was here. So we were in close proximity, obviously. Um, And then I started setting off the audible alert tone, which I guess also makes the phone vibrate. Not only is it loud, but it's audible. Um, And I could hear it. So following the person I kept setting it off over and over again, um, which then prompted them to pull it out of their backpack, walk over to a small area and they were trying to, to shut it up. Um, so I said, Hey, that's, that's my mom's phone. Can I, can I please have it back? Um, they, they didn't have her bag or anything else, but fortunately the phone was recovered. So things like the cards could easily be canceled. Um, all of the pictures and whatnot on the device, um, were, were obviously back secured. Um, and he, he claimed he found it on the, on the side of the, like in the dirt, um, which I kind of believe because the phone was moving at a very fast pace for quite some time. 
then stopped in a location and then slowly started moving again. So it was as if someone was walking quickly with the bag, rifling through it, found the phone, thought, oh, this could be tracked, tossed it off to the side and then kept going. Um, so it shows the power of find my iPhone. Um, I wouldn't recommend if you think you're going to be in danger, <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to, to, to go into apartment buildings. I've heard of people going into apartment yeah. buildings, pounding yeah. on doors, etc. cetera. Um, but it, it was definitely valuable in this case, um, especially because of all of the contents on the phone, phone numbers, et cetera. I mean, it definitely check it out. I, I've actually started, I, I've actually used the Android version as well um, to locate not a stolen device, but a device I couldn't remember where I put it. Um, and it'll get you down to at least a, a, a pretty good location of the device. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, 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 and, and, and again, you were like in public in the regatta and I, I presume they didn't look like a person that would have stolen the phone, right? Like they're like, like they gave off a vibe that you were going to be okay approaching them. Oh yeah. They definitely gave off a vibe. I was gonna be okay. And the guy was quasi apologetic, mm -hmm. which was, was odd. So it, it really it kind of being in a big group of public, there were three police sitting on a bench mm -hmm. like probably eight <laughs> feet from us yeah um, so if it got so, weird so, yeah so so i didn't feel like i was in any danger you had an adventure sir yeah it was definitely an adventure that's awesome but that's it's, awesome. it's awkward to try to go through all those settings when you're trying to also keep up a, a certain <laughs> pace to catch up with the device I imagine you're like oh that's an interesting feature no i gotta get this phone <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think that's... Oh, hey, I wanted to give a shout-out because <laughs> Chilla moves in for the kill from Kraus in the chat room. Uh, I want to give a shout-out because uh, Wheels uh, Wheels is involved, of course, with the uh, the volunteer uh, fire departments down in his area, down in California, PA, around that area. Um, and, uh, and, and his awesome thing, apparently he got a new radio. We always have to... Uh, uh, hear him uh, uh, shut it off whenever he's joining us on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, the Baofeng UV5R dual band two-way radio <laughs> is his latest one. Uh, so give it a shout out for that. That's thirty about 30 bucks over there on Amazon.com if you want to go check out uh, what that is if you're a radio nut like he is. so Is that a, is that in the notes? Uh, not in the notes. Wait, oh yeah, I might have copied it over. Hmm? Might, maybe I did. I will. I will copy it over. <laughs> uh, I'll put it right under your uh, your story time, Chilla. Uh, cool, so there you thanks. go. There you go. Yeah, Chilla's going to check that out. And please use the Amazon button over on awesomecast.net if you want to purchase anything off there. We get a little bit of kickback. I haven't seen one yet, but apparently we're supposed to if people buy things. So um, I, I, think. I, I think we do have like five bucks in there. But again, it's one of those like you have to make like 20 before they send you a check kind of thing. So uh, um, but anyways. Guys, it's been fun. Katie Dudas, at K Dudas on the Twitter. Hi. Well, you know, where will we be this weekend, Sorg? PodCamp Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's right. We're supposed to talk about that. PodCamp Pittsburgh is this weekend. PodCampPittsburgh.com. Uh, Sogertron Media, Work Hard Pittsburgh, and Stream Pittsburgh will be providing these streams. You can check it out uh, uh, live, and we'll have videos afterwards. But the best experience for you to be there in person there's some great stuff. We're going to be doing a state of podcast panel on Saturday at, I think, 10 a.m. in the main room there. Um, I'm going to have Elsie Escobar of, uh, of um, it's I think it's Geek Girl and, of course, the Libsyn podcast, the, the feed with the Libsyn podcast. Um, I think I screwed up the other one, though. Uh, but she's going to be joining us. She's had some great talks there at PodCamp in the past, as well as uh, one of the guys from uh, Drinking Drinking Partners, I believe. I, I think Doug from Should I Drink That is going to be on the panel as well. Uh, so, And, of course, we're going to do a panel on Sunday about 360 video and VR. Katie might do something, too. Maybe. Ooh, Maybe. Let me know what you want me to do. <laughs> what do you want her to talk about? Check it out. <laughs> I'm going to crowdsource it. That's it. There you go. Are they going to be Are they going to be live streaming? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, we're going to do. Um, I think we're we're doing significant upgrades to the live streaming this year, uh, thanks to the system that we've been doing here at Silvertron Media, the live stream rig from Work Hard Pittsburgh, and uh, again, the Stream Pittsburgh guys are contributing some hardware as well. 
So I don't know if I have all the people to keep checking in on the hardware. So I might still be running around a bit, uh, but they will be streaming, recording and all that stuff. So hopefully we'll have a better kind of posting for everything than than I had last year before when I said, hey, here's the time on the Google on on the Google uh, 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 feed where this this session is, go for it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I'll, I'll be traveling that day, so I think I'm going to try to watch some while while chill, traveling. Chill, 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 chill. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Katie's a busy Saturday too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Things and creepy things to do. Podcampittsburgh.com. Check it out. Be a part of it. Meet and greet at Looking for Group on Friday night. Uh, Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters, ChillaTech.net. John Chachilla on the Facebooks. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our chat room, live.sorgatronmedia.com. The wheels is hanging out there. Crazy Kraus. Everybody that drops in and out throughout the night. Thank you so much for joining us. You're our awesome chat room. Check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. Uh, uh, support us on patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, or click any of the links over there to our, 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 our affiliate links and stuff like that uh, if you want to support the show that way. Or just share the show with some te- some techie friends that will be into this kind of thing. Uh, thank you to you, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.